of sin and shame, but Jesus found me and he changed my name. He could have let me drown. He could have let me drown. No, oh, he could have let me drown. But instead he took me in. I was sinking in a sea. But Jesus found me.
I just, I, I just praise God for this entire, entire uh, revival. Uh, there's a couple of things I, I want to say before we get started because I know that uh, for some of you, I won't even get the chance to shake your hand. Um, some of you have been here all, all week and I still hadn't been able to shake your hand and I, I love meeting and greeting. And, uh, but I, I just wanted to just to express to you uh, my gratitude uh, for um, all that uh, you guys have done, your, 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 your warm welcome, uh, your handshakes, your smiles, your funny stories, because uh, I love to laugh. I love, I love to laugh, and I, I praise God for, I praise God for your testimonies. Uh, the things that you shared with me because of God's word, not because of me, but because of God's word, the things that you shared with me, uh, it really did encourage me. And um, I'm, 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 I will be forever, forever grateful uh, for, this, for this opportunity. Um, brother Eddie, once again, love you much, brother. Love you much. And I praise God for you and for your wife and for your entire church. Um, you really do know how to uh, show a person the love of Christ. And um, surprisingly, that's not easy when it comes to Christians. But y'all got it down pat. <laughs> y'all got it. Y'all got it. Y'all got it. So thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Riverview, uh, for, uh, for, for coming once again. And uh, praise God for each and every one of you. Praise Posse. God bless you. Love you, love you, love you, love you. Um, did you say that this is your first revival since you've been here? Second, Second revival. Well, this is my first revival that I have ever ever preached where I preached every day. I've been to revivals where, you know, I would maybe preach on Monday and someone else on Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever, but this is the very first time that God has allowed me to uh, preach an entire revival. And uh, I, I give God glory, I give him praise, I give him honor uh, for all that he has done in this place. Um, I will remember this for the rest of my life, for the rest of my life, for you guys giving me this opportunity. Amen, amen, amen. Well, um, to my sweet thing, God bless you. Uh, love you, love you much, love you much. And I don't want this thing to end. Because God has been absolutely awesome. <laughs> oh, don't tempt me. Don't tempt me. I saw some more stuff in the verses. I said, man, I just can't get it all in today. But <sighs> Well, uh, those of you who have your Bibles, and I pray that we all do. Uh, could you please turn to the book of Obadiah? Uh, just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> you should have seen your face is like <laughs> the book is Daniel chapter 3 and we'll begin reading at the 26th verse Daniel chapter 3 and we'll begin reading at the 26th verse and as we have done all week long, when you find it, those of you who can't stand, would you please stand in the honor of reading the word of God. If you have it, say amen. amen. And the word of the Lord reads, then Nebuchadnezzar went near the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spoke saying, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. 
servants of the most high God come out and come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came from the midst of the fire and the satraps, the administrators, the governors, and the king's counselors gathered together and they saw these men on whose bodies the fire had no power. The hair of their head was not singed, nor were their garments affected, and the smell of fire was not on them. Nebuchadnezzar spoke saying, blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who sent his angels and delivered his servants who trusted in him. And they have frustrated the king's word and yielded their bodies that they should not serve nor worship any God except their own God. Therefore, I make a decree that any people, nation, or language which speaks anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces and their houses shall be made an ash heap because there is no other God who can deliver like this. We're going to remain standing and we'll, we're going to pray, but I want for us to think about this subject maybe for the last time. Enough is enough. Let us pray. Father God, thank you so much for everything that you have shown us. And thank you, Lord, for your presence in this place. You did not have to come and visit with us but we're so glad that you did Lord we, we're glad that your presence is here Lord and Lord we just love to praise you we love to worship you we just love you and God there's absolutely no one like you thank you Lord for what you have done and the many lives you have touched the seeds that you have planted thank you Lord one more time one more time Lord we're asking Lord if, if you would speak to us tonight that you, when you speak that you would make it clear and you would make it plain so that we your servants will know how to take a stand and say enough is enough as I decrease increase in me so that we hear from you and not from me because Lord you have the words of eternal life speak Lord because if you don't speak nothing will be said it's in the name of Jesus we pray, amen. You may be seated. Enough is enough. We have come to the end of a journey. A journey that, 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 that took us from three Hebrew boys that were being picked on. A journey that, that, that took us from, from, from these Hebrew boys and, and understanding uh, their dilemma and understanding where they came from and understanding their love for God. And, and through this journey, we have, we have discovered many things about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But I hope that we have also learned a lot about us. That, that, that we just didn't go through these verses and we think, well, that's wonderful what happened to them. 
but we actually applied it to our lives. And we, and, and we, 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 we were thinking about God's goodness in our lives and we were, we, we were saying, well, Lord, am I in this story? Am, am, am I Shadrach, Meshach, or Abednego? Or am I Nebuchadnezzar? This journey has, 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 has showed us many, many things and, and we started kind of at a place in their lives where things were going great. They were wonderful. I mean, they were in Babylon, but despite that, they were elevated. They, 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 uh, God had made sure that they were taken care of. But then they took a stand for the Lord. And so I hope I hope that by the time we leave here today that if you have been hesitant to take a stand, that you will leave this place filled with God's Holy Spirit and his power. And the next time someone comes picking on you, that you'll remember what you heard. That is why we came here, to be revived. I, I, I was thinking, what is the point of coming to revival if you have no intentions of being revived? It's like going to a barber shop, telling, telling your wife, honey, I'm going to the barber shop. And you get to the barber shop and you sit down and the barber says, well, you want me to cut your hair? No. No, I'll just watch everyone else get their hair cut. And then you go home to your wife and your wife says, well, honey, your hair is still the same. Yeah, I know, I know. I just, I just, just thought I'd go to the barbershop. But everyone's, everyone else's hair, it looks good. Unfortunately, that's how we treat revival. We, 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 we go to revival because that's what we're supposed to do. We go to revival and we watch everybody else get revived. And then we go home. And you tell someone, I was in revival last week. And they ask you, did you get revived? No. <laughs> I just went and sat. I pray that, that, that even if that was your intentions on Sunday morning, I pray that God has changed your mind and changed your heart. That you said, you know what? Enough is enough. I, I've had it up to hear with these spiritual bullies. Bullies that, 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 that try to make us do things that we don't want to do. Like that bully that I've been telling you about ever since Sunday morning. That bully, his name was James. And James terrified me all throughout seventh grade. And then in eighth grade, I said, enough is enough. And I stood up to James. And I said, James, I'm not going to take it any longer. I'm no longer going to be running from you. I'm no longer going to be hiding from you. You're not going to take my lunch money that my mama gave me. I am not going to go hungry, not another time. James didn't like that. <laughs> and he says, all right, I'll meet you on the bus. Because if you fight at school, you get suspended. But if you fight on the bus, you're not at school. So you get, like, excused. Like, almost, it was like almost a license to fight. <laughs> if you want to have a fight, ride the bus home. <laughs> and so all throughout that day, I was like, terrified. I said, what have you done, Tony? Oh, maybe I just should have given him my lunch money and, and let it be that and I'll just be broke for the rest of my life. <laughs> but as the time got closer and closer and the bell, the final bell rung, I got 
on that bus. And although my heart was pounding, I meant what I said. Enough is enough. So the bus took off. He jumps up in my face. And he said, what did you say to me? And remember what I told you? I, I said, I said, I, I didn't stu 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 stutter. made him mad <laughs> so he pushed me and I pushed him back and then he swung at me and I swung back and there we are we are just exchanging blows we grab each other and we we're on the bus and we've we've broken one seat and we're, we're on the verge of breaking another seat just going at it They separated us, and wouldn't you know it, though, we get off on the same stop. <laughs> so I was expecting to go another round because they separated us. My eye was little black right there. My chest and ribs were hurting. So I got off the bus and he got off first, I got off and then I saw him walking up the street and I said, huh. So I saw him the next day at school. We were walking down the hall, going the opposite direction. Here I am, face to face with this bully. What happens when you get face to face with your bully? After you've taken that stand, after you, you, you've, you, you said, Enough, it's enough, and, and I want to let you know, I, I felt initially, I felt I didn't win because I, I, I went home a little bit more bruised than he was. I mean, he walked off and he was just laughing. I walk off and I was limping. <laughs> so, I, I mean, I was like, man, I, I, don't tell me that I did all that and, and, and now I, I'm, it's all going to be the same. You ever feel like it's not worth it standing up for the Lord? Because when you stand up, it seems like things get worse. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego can attest to that. They stood up to Nebuchadnezzar. They said, that enough is enough. We're not going to do it. And Nebuchadnezzar said, you know what? I'm tired of y'all. The Bible says that his face changed. His expression changed. His attitude changed toward Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He said, throw them in the fire and fire furnace and turn it up seven times hotter. So he threw them in there and he thought they were burning. But then we discovered last night that they didn't burn. Last night we, di we discovered that they didn't burn. And Nebuchadnezzar was dumbfounded. How? How? We threw three that there's four. How? Listen. When you say enough is enough, you got to learn to shake off intimidation. You got to learn to break off negotiations. You got to learn how to sound off with determination. Then you got to learn how to fight off temptation. But after all that is done and God shows up 
after all that is done and, and you're thrown in the fire furnace or you're, you, you, you're thrown in life and you're expected to burn, you're expected to fail, you're expected to be destroyed, but God comes down and he makes a way for you. And people are scratching their head and they're wondering how, how did this happen after all of that, after shaking off and breaking off and sounding off and, and fighting off, now it's time to show off his domination. It is now time to show off that your God has dominion over everything. That your God is not some wimpy God. That your God is not some cry baby God. Your God, your God not sitting up in heaven scratching his head wondering what he's going to do next. After God does what he does, now it, it, it's time to show the world God's domination, dominion. Our God reigns. That means that he has dominion over everything, over everyone, our God reigns. He reigns supreme. Our God reigns forever and ever. And since our God, our Father reigns, then his children ought to be able to show the world just how much he reigns. His children ought to be able to, to, to show God's, God's, God's ultimate and supremacy over everything. They get called out of the fiery furnace. They get called out fiery furnace, and now it's time for Shadrach and Meshach to show the world what God has done. I said it's time for them to show the world what God has done. What God has done. This was not a time for them to brag and and and, and get their Stroll on and say, yeah, we bad. Yeah, we bad. We told you that. Yeah. No. It's not time for you to get glory. When God does something wonderful in your life, it's not time for you to stick out your chest and say, look how great I am. No. It is now time for you to tell the world what has happened because the world tries over and over again to destroy us but over and over again God comes through and they're wondering how it's time for Nebuchadnezzar to get his question answered remember that question he asked on the first day we were talking about it he says I'm going to throw you in the fiery furnace and who is the God that will deliver you from my hands. You got to know God was up in heaven saying, oh, 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 okay. 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 Who is the God that's going to deliver? Nebuchadnezzar is about to get the answer because these three Hebrew boys, they come out. And when we listen, when we come out, when we show off the Lord's domination, this is what happens. When we show it off, God's power is observed. When God does what he does, his, he, he, the, the, the power of God is observed by everyone. Listen, the world's going to want to see the power of God in your life. You've been bragging on God all, all your life. You, you've been telling people how good God is. You've been telling people how great God is. Now it's time for you to show how good God is. It's showtime. Listen, it's one thing to talk it. It's another thing to show it. See, that's what... That had been the mindset of Jesus because, you, you, know, you know, anyone can say that I love you. 
Anyone can say love you. But the Bible says that God showed his love when he sent Jesus Christ on the cross and he died for our sins. He didn't just say that he loved us. He showed that he loved us. It is time to show the Lord's domination. When we show that domination, we, 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 we reveal that God's power is observed in our life. Nebuchadnezzar, in verse 25, he said, look. You get that? Look. After all that we did to them, look. After how bad we treated them. What does the world see when they look at you? When they say, look, what will they see? Will they see Christians throwing temple tantrums? Will they see us pouting? Will they see us striking back? Will they see us handling our own business? What will they see when the world says, Look at that, that Christian. He go to church. He cussing folk out too. Look! What does the world see when they look at us? Verse 27, the Bible says that, 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 that God, listen, this is how God's power is observed on these boys. The Bible says that their bodies and their hair were not even seen. The, 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 their, their, bodies, their bodies were okay. That, 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 that the fire had no power over them. Listen, they were living proof that God's word is true. Isaiah 43 and 2 says, When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. See, Isaiah was written before Daniel. So, these boys, they read Isaiah. It's one thing to read it. It's another thing to go through it. It's one thing to read about someone who, who was down and out, but it's another thing to be down and out. It's one thing to read about how God picks someone up, but it's another thing for God to pick you up. They didn't just read it. They lived it. They showed the power of God. God reigns supreme. Listen, Nebuchadnezzar had fire power, but God has all power. All power is in his hands. I cannot believe this old Neb had to say. Not only not only are they they're not burned, but they're loose, they're walking around, and not only do I not see three, I see four. Get them boys out of there. I got to know how they do that. Listen, when God does the miraculous in your life, the world's going to wonder, how would you do that? Can I tell you what the wrong answer starts with? Ah. How'd you do that? Jesus. Jesus. What do you mean, Jesus? Jesus. Because, see, I thought I was a goner, too. I was in the same boat with you. I thought I was a goner, but Jesus, but Jesus, you plotted against me, but Jesus, you, you wanted me to fail, but, but Jesus, you said I'll never be anything, but Jesus. You got to understand that anything that the world says, all you got to say is, but Jesus. Yes, I was no good, but Jesus. Yes, I was no count, but Jesus.
when we show off his domination. God's power is observed. But number two, when we show off his domination, God's praise is preserved. Don't miss that. When, when God does what only God can do, his praise is preserved. What do you mean, preacher? Well, the Bible says later on in verse 27 that their garments were not affected. Their garments were not torched. Their garments were not burned. If you go back to Isaiah, Isaiah says, you know what? In, in Isaiah 61.3, the Lord says, I'll give you a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. When the, these boys, what, 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 their, their, their garments, they were thrown in with the garments. But they came out with the garments. God preserved praise. These boys went in praising God. And then when they were pulled out, they were still praising God because their garments or their praise was not affected. What happens when you go through something? Will you still praise God? Or will your garments be torn off? Will you take your garments and just bow them up in the closet and say, that's it? Understand that God's praise must be preserved and will be preserved in us if we just trust in him. You can praise your way through everything. You can praise your way through everything. It does not matter how hot it gets. Make sure you got your garment on. That garment of praise. That praise that says that God's still worthy. That, 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 that garment that says that, that I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises will continually be in my mouth. Get this. The Bible goes on to say that they didn't even smell. They didn't even smell like smoke. Their garments wasn't affected. They're, they still had the praise. They're, they didn't even smell like, like, in other words, if you didn't see them go through it, you wouldn't know that they went through it. When the last time you did a sniff test? <laughs> You're not smelling for body odor. You're smelling to see if you smell like smoke. Because when you smell like smoke, everybody knows you've, you've been going through something. Because your face is mad. You're mad at the world. You don't want to talk to nobody. Don't want to go to church. You stop praising. you mad at God. Don't want nothing to do with Jesus. Why? Because you smell like smoke. Everyone knows you've gone through. Girl, let me tell you, I've been going through. <laughs> Their garments didn't even smell like smoke. They, they, they still had the garment of praise. Even though they went through everything that they went through, they were thrown in the fire with the garments. But when they came out, they still had their garments. They still had the praise. Listen, the world sees us praising God when everything's going great. The world sees us praising God when, 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 when the car payment is paid. The, the, the world sees us praising God when the house payment is paid. The world sees us praising God when husband acting right and wife acting right and kids acting right and pastors are acting right and deacons or acting right and churches are acting right oh when everything's going right everyone's praising God but listen the world wants to know will you still praise God when all hell is breaking loose in your life is he still worthy
will you still have on your garment of praise? You need to do a garment check right now and say, yep, I still got it. Yep, he's still worthy. Yep, I will still praise him. It's time to show off his domination. That when we show off his domination, God's praise is preserved. When we show off his domination, his, his power is observed. But then lastly, when we show off his domination, God's position is deserved. When we, when we show what God has done, it'll be irrefutable proof that God's position, it is deserved. When the Lord does what only the Lord can do, there will be no doubt who reigns supreme. You j just think about some of the situations you were in. Just, j j just think about some of the, the calamity that's come uh, I in your life. And, and everyone thought that you were done and it was over with. But here you are. Here you are still here. And you know it wasn't because of your intellect. You know it wasn't because of your education. You know it wasn't because you connected. You know it wasn't because of who you know except for you know Jesus. God's position, it is deserved. There is no doubt because God does what he can do. His, his position of ruler, it is deserved. His position of king, it is deserved. His position of Lord over our lives, it is deserved. His position of master of our seas, it is deserved. His position of strong tower, it is deserved. His position of battle axe, it is deserved. Every single good thing you can say about God, God deserves it. Listen, people don't like that God says he's almighty. People just can't stand that he says he's omnipotent. They just really hate it when he says he's omniscient, that he's omnipresent, that he has all power. What makes God say all that? See, see, there are other gods too. See, I, I, I serve Allah and Allah okay with me. Tell Allah. Walk up to the Red Sea. And part it. Because see, if Allah is the same, then surely Allah can part a little old Red Sea. He's had thousands of years to do it, and he ain't done it yet. God deserves the, the position that we put him in. Listen, where is God in your, what position is he? Huh? I mean, is he up there, or is he like somewhere down here? Is he like down here? Or maybe some of you can't even find God. As big as he is, you have a clue. He deserves to be number one. And listen, I tell Riverview this all the time. He is not even interested in being tied for first. So look to your spouse and say, honey, I love you. But it is nothing 
compared to how much I love God. His position is deserved. When the Lord moves the world, the world will tell the world how good God is. Huh? When God moves the world, that's how good God is. That's how the world will tell the world how good God is. How you know that? Well, the Bible says, listen, that, that in verse 28, Nebuchadnezzar spoke. I want you to notice that ever since verse 18, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego ain't said a word. They ain't said nothing. Their last words are, but if not, we still not going to bow. We still not going to worship. We don't hear another word from them in scripture in this chapter. So who's going to tell how good God is in this chapter? God says, I'm so God, I'll make the world tell their partners how great I am. Because the Bible says that Nebuchadnezzar says, blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. In other words, he was saying, praise the God of Shadrach. What? What you just saying who? Now you know who, Neb. God Almighty. Praise be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When the Lord moves, the world will tell the world, man, that God is all right. Man, that God is better than I've ever seen before. Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. In other words, praise the Lord. What else could he say? He's been ousted. He's He's been dumbfounded. What else can he say but praise the Lord? When you think you all that and God has to show you that you are none of that, the only thing you can say is praise the Lord. Listen, if you need one more reason why God's position is deserved, Nebuchadnezzar says it best in verse 29. He says, there is no other God who can deliver like this. There is no. There is, in other words, Nebuchadnezzar said, I've seen a lot of things. I, I, I've come up against a lot of gods. I, 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 have, I have, have blasted a lot of kings, a, a lot of lords. But when I got to the king of kings and the lord of lords, when I messed around and made God almighty mad, he put me in my place. And I got to tell you, can't nobody do things like God can do them. Can't nobody. Do you like Jesus? Nobody loves you like Jesus. Nobody cares for you like Jesus. Nobody. Who won the fight? Initially, I thought I lost. I was I was beat up more than he was and I thought that I would have to continue giving him my lunch money and so when we were walking down the hall coming face to face he said what's up Tony walks on and he didn't see me but I looked behind <laughs> Listen, because see it didn't look like that I won it didn't feel like 
that I won. But listen, you can't, you can't go on what it looks like or what it feels like. Listen, you got to know that your God reigns supreme. No matter what it looks like, never give up on God. No matter what it sounds like, never give up on God. You got to say enough is enough. I'm going with Jesus all the way. No turning back. I will do the things that God wants me to do. I will live like he wants me to live. I will give him glory. I will give him praise. I will represent God. I will because he's done so much for me. He's done so much. A little extra bonus. A couple of weeks later. There was a kid that came up to me after the fight, and he says, you know what? I'm sure I'm glad you stood up to him because he's been bullying me too. And now I saw you standing up too. Now I know I can do the same. Listen, you don't know who's looking at you. You don't know who's watching you. Listen, they are watching you right now. And they're wondering if you're going to give up. But if they see you holding on to God, you can be that testimony. You can be that encouragement. And they say, if she can do it, then I know I can. If God blesses her, then I know he'll bless me. If God comes through for them, I know they'll come through for me. Enough is enough. Let's shake off intimidation. Satan is a defeated foe. He's already defeated. The only thing he can do is talk bad. Shake it off. Enough is enough. Break off negotiations. Either you say it or you ain't. Either you're going to live for him or you're not. Live for him. Break off negotiations. Quit trying to please the world. Care what they think. Sound off with determination. I don't care what happens. I don't care how hard it gets. I will never give up on God. Fight off temptation. Because the minute you take that stand, there's a world out there that says, oh yeah? What if I do this? You're not going to give up. You're not going to give up on God? What if I do that? Really? You still standing strong? What if I do that? Fight off that temptation. Because it's coming. I don't care how long you've been saved. I don't care the, the million, millions of things you've seen God do. The best Christians tempted to give up the best. David, David, he even wrote, he says, I would have given up if I hadn't believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And when all that's done, it's time to show off now. And when you show off God's domination, you don't care what you look like. You don't care what you sound like. You know why? Because you've already declared enough is enough. I don't care what you think. I'm not living for you in a way. 
I, 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 I can't express to you how much I don't care. And sometimes you're going to have to make it plain to them. I don't care what you think. I, I get told all the time, Tony, you're just a little, you're just a little too into it when you preach it. And, and sometimes, sometimes, you know, you, you may want to tone it down. You may want to, because, you know, sometimes it just don't look good. I don't care. When I was out in the world, Riverview already knows this. When I was out in the world, I was out in the world. I didn't ride the bench. I was first string center. And I didn't care who saw me on the dance floor. Matter of fact, I wanted you to look at me. I, I wanted you to see how good I looked. How well I wanted you to see. But God, one day God showed me. He showed me me. And I didn't like it. From then on, he started changing me. He started changing me and it's no longer about me but one thing I'm glad he didn't take away is my exuberance I was exuberant for Satan why in the world would I want to come in church and be a prune <laughs> Well, preacher, God is holy. God is holy. Yes, he's holy. He is absolutely holy. And I never, ever take away from that. But he gives me liberty to praise him. He gives me liberty to preach him. I get a little loud sometimes. God is so worthy. I did so much damage. I did so much damage to the church when I was out there. And I want to spend a lifetime Allowing God to use me any way he wants to. You don't have to be like me to love the Lord. You can stand still in one place and preach. Praise God. God made us different. He made us different. Celebrate the differences. The bad thing is when we separate because of the differences. Listen, I'll ask the question again and then Brother Eddie will come up. Why go to the barbershop, sit down, and watch everyone else get their hair cut? Tonight, Get in the chair of revival. Climb up in the chair on this altar and say, Lord, you already know about me. Anything I tell you, you already know. I just want you to fix me. Fix me. Because I need reviving and I've seen everyone else revived 
I'm in a chair now. God is good. He's wonderful. And we give him praise, honor, and glory. God bless you.